Good morning. Good morning. We're, we kind of wait a little bit. We know that when it's food Sunday, everybody's kind of lingering downstairs, getting their food plugged in. But, you know, um, we have a lot to do today. It's an exciting Sunday, so let's stand. I know sometimes when the food smells start lingering up through the vents, we all start thinking, could he stop talking now? It's time to eat. But we know church is going to get over about 1130-ish. So between now and 1130-ish, if we could just give God our complete and full attention, everything else will still be there. We want to worship today without looking to our left, looking to our right. Don't look at us. I'm here. I, I make some funny faces when I sing. So sometimes I wish, you, you know, I could put a curtain up so you don't have to see me sing. But if we close our eyes or if we just concentrate on him, it won't matter what we're doing. It won't matter what the people to our left or right's doing. If we focus on ourselves and worshiping Jesus. Imagine what it would be like if Jesus was standing here face to face. I can only imagine what it would be like because I don't know if I, just like the song says, I don't know if I would fall down, if I would, how I would do it. I, I think I would just probably run up and give him a great big hug and, you know, just bow at his feet and just worship him. I don't know, but he is here. We may not see him with our eyes, but I feel the presence. So we're going to worship and praise him as if we are standing face to face. Amen. Father God, we give you praise and glory and honor for everything that you've done for us and everything that you are doing and things that you're going to do. We thank you that you are an almighty God, that you are a living God. Father, we ask that your anointing be on this service today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. The glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King Rise among us, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. 
eyes one more time let the glory of the Lord let the glory of the Lord arise among us let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of the King rise among us they rise let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the joy of the King rise among us let it rise Glory. 
I want to see you one more time. Holy, 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 holy.
for this sanctuary, this place, Lord, where we can just come and cast all our cares aside and focus in today, God, on the confidence we had that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That, Jesus, you love us with an unchanging love. That there's nothing in our lives that is bigger than your ability to help us with. That we are never alone, never abandoned never hopeless and never helpless. Jesus, thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for being our friend. Jesus, we invite you in right now. Any place where there's brokenness, God, body, soul, or spirit, Jesus, you are the healer. You said you came to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free, to proclaim liberty to those in bondage. Jesus, thank you Thank you that you're still doing that today through your church. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Fill this house. Fill each heart. If you've got a word from the Lord today, speak it out. exalted father oh lord thank you for that word today of encouragement god we just we just want to drink in your presence we live in a troubled world god a fallen world but jesus we are here today 
because we need to just come closer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving in our midst, for touching our hearts. We love you, Jesus. Amen. David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. It is good to see you. You may be seated. Thank you for worshiping with us today. So glad that you can be in the Lord's house with us today. And uh, this is a special Sunday for us. This is our Vision Sunday. We do this once a year. And it's, uh, it's a time for us to uh, briefly celebrate some things in the past. You know, it's good to reflect, right? It's good to reflect. I think we need to remember where God was faithful and what he did. And that gives us encouragement that he'll do it again, right? That our God is never going to drop the ball on us. Do you believe that? A little weak. God's never going to drop the ball on us. Amen. He's got us. I mean, you know, Jesus said, if a, you know, I got the hairs of your head numbered. A sparrow can't fall to the ground without him knowing it. And we are worth what? Worth what? More than many sparrows. And so I know sometimes it feels like the bottom of life drops out. We've all been there. But underneath, as the scripture says, are what? The everlasting arms. Take hope. If you're in a high spot today, celebrate and praise God. If you're in a low spot today, take encouragement. It's not always going to be this way. Amen. Amen. God sees us through. Well, we're going to uh, receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. Uh, the way we do this here at Eagle Mountain is just kind of work our way from front to back. And you can come up either side and put your offering in here. And uh, I just want to say thank you for being so supportive of your church and of missions. It is great to have a church that is so generous, and I'll say more about that later this morning. So I'm going to pray over our offering, and then you can come, and the worship team's got a great song for us. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for blessing us, God, re rebuking the devourer, supplying our needs. God, you are so faithful and good. So today, God, as we bring to you our tithe or the tenth, out of uh, that which you told us that we could keep, God, you've said bring the tithe, and out of that 90%, we also bring offerings today. God, it's just a demonstration of how much we love and appreciate you. And God, your word says we can never outgive you. We thank you, God, that we give and you give back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for blessing us. Bless this offering time now. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and bring your offerings. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice Time. 
and oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing that again. How great is our God? And how great is our God? Oh, sing with me. How great is our God? And oh, we'll see how great, how great. serve an awesome God. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do. Woo. Love that song. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate your faithfulness. A couple announcements to make, and uh, then we'll dismiss our young people for their Sunday school classes today. But uh, today is a unique Sunday. It's what we call Vision Sunday. We do this once a year, typically in January, but we got COVIDed. That's my new verb, COVIDed. And uh, so COVID kind of bumped us out of being able to do our vision last month. So we just said, let's just wait. We'll just let this move on and we can celebrate on the 20th and have our fellowship meal and just enjoy ourselves. So here we are. So it's a unique Sunday. My message today isn't going to be uh, a typical sermon. It's going to be a presentation of, of our church's vision for 22 as, all, and as well as reflections on 21. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, afterwards, we're going to go downstairs and have a wonderful meal together. Uh, we've got 100 pieces of fried chicken that will soon be arriving and uh, I noticed the crock pots were stacking up down there. You know, I always feel like as a pastor, I need to go down and make sure everything's okay in the kitchen. You know, that's just... And Liz was down there cutting salami and cheese. And Liz, everything in me wanted to grab some of that. And I just felt like, you know, then I'd have salami breath all morning and that would be bad. So, um, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a great time down there together. There's really no program during the meal. It's just time for us to enjoy each other and do one of the things that I think Eagle Mountain does a really good job at, and that's just loving on each other and building relationships. It's, uh, it's great for us to be together. So I hope you'll come down and join us. It's a potluck style meal, but you say, well, I'm a visitor and I didn't know about it or I didn't bring anything. Just come help us work on that hundred pieces of chicken. I, I think we're going to have plenty of food down there. So um, come, and, come and join us after service today, please. Um, we are also coming up on our next date for our Bible study on Sunday nights. We do a Bible study here in 22 uh, once a Sunday night, uh, one Sunday night a month. And so that's going to be uh, coming up here next Sunday night. So we'd love to have you be with us. We'll be in the Bible study room for an hour uh, talking about how to study the Bible. That's kind of where we left off before. And uh, you guys had some homework. You were supposed to bring some of the fruits of your own Bible study to share with the group. So um, just reminding you of that. So that will be next Sunday night at 6 o'clock right over here. Uh, Willard and Lydia, it's good to have you back with us. Our hearts have gone out to you um, Many of you probably know Lydia's father passed away uh, and out in Kansas, and uh, they've been traveling. So, Lydia, we especially feel your loss and keep you in our prayers. We are also continuing to pray for Wayne Drake. Uh, Wayne is down at Sarah Bush, and uh, he's, he's on oxen. He's in a regular room. Yeah, that's progress. We praise God for that. Amen. Amen. But he, he is battling COVID and pneumonia. And so is, is that safe to say that's his main struggle right now? And the sodium is still an issue. So we need to pray that sodium levels out. All right. And we need to pray for Sherry and, and the whole family. This is, a, this is a tough season. Can we just reach a hand out right now and just pray? Father God, we love Wayne and Sherry. We thank you so much for them. They're our friends. And God, we, uh, we just invite you into that room 
there at Sarah Bush right now that the healing power of Jesus would surround Wayne. We come against COVID, we come against pneumonia and whatever's causing the low sodium. In Jesus' name, we command spirits of infirmity to flee from that room, from his body, and we speak the healing power of the blood of Jesus right now to flow all through Wayne's body. God, renew his strength, clear his mind, bring him back to full awareness of your peace and presence, God, and give Sherry grace as she is coming alongside him. Give her strength, Father God. We know that she is a, a comforting influence for Wayne, and we just pray, God, that you would anoint her time with him this afternoon. God, we just thank you for sustaining our friends in this battle, and we continue to stand alongside them in Jesus' name. And God, we do pray for Willard and Lydia that you just continue to sustain them. Father God, you know the uh, difficulties that they've had, and we just thank you that uh, her father knew Jesus, and uh, he is rejoicing with the Lord today, but it still hurts. Leaves a hole in our hearts, God, and we just pray for Lydia and Willard and the whole family for supernatural grace to continue. God, thank you for your presence here today, and, and now as we take a look at, at vision, God, we just pray that you'd open our eyes, ears, stir us, God, give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now we're going to dismiss our young people, but I want to give you this little piece of instruction first. Um, the problem with doing vision on Sunday morning is that there are people downstairs in the nursery, the preschool, the elementary class, youth, and they can't be a part of it. So for you teachers and kitchen workers and anybody that doesn't get to be a part of this vision time this morning, uh, Afterwards, when dessert time, how's that? When we're doing our dessert after our meal, we're going to come up to the, the Bible study room, and I'm just going to give you kind of a Reader's Digest condensed version if you would like to, to be a part of that. And you can also watch it on YouTube or Facebook, so there is that. But uh, just, just know we want you to be a part of Vision and know what's going on. And so uh, thank you. So Sunday school, we have all of our classes running. We've got a nursery. We've got preschool. We have uh, our elementary class and youth. So any of our children may at this time be dismissed to go with their teachers. Thank you, teachers, for loving on our kids. Amen. All right, so Ron is going to dial me in here. Actually, he's going to dial me out. Uh, he's going to take me out of the uh, live stream, and he's going to get us focused on just the, the view behind us for the sake of those that are watching from home so that they can see the slide. So um, hopefully we'll get, get back widescreen again once the worship team comes up. So uh, that is our plan today. And... Uh, I'd like to just start out with a little walkthrough. Now, you're going to have to uh, put up with me talking to Steve a little bit uh, because Steve and I are just going to verbally communicate on the slides. Don't you love that picture of our building? That's not an angle that you typically see it. Mary Ann snapped that shot when we were out walking, and uh, I just love that, that picture. This building is 126 years old. That is a vision. Steve and Libby, how many years ago did you get married right here? 50s. Did they say the same thing? <laughs> so we're, we're going to go with Bob. There. I mean Steve there. i tell you what. Right up here. Awesome. Awesome. I talked to Steve this week. And I said, how's Libby doing? And he said, oh, she's getting along pretty good, doing, doing better. He said, the, the weird thing, though, is she keeps calling me Bob. And, and I'm like, oh, that's really weird. What's the deal? And he goes, I'm just kidding. And I was like, <laughs> he had me, hook, line, and sinker right there. So, yeah, you got to watch Steve Fox. I'm just saying, be careful. So, 126-year-old building, let's, let's take a look inside. What are some things going on with the Eagle Mountain family? Reflecting back a little bit on 21. Next slide. Now, this is not inside the Eagle Mountain building, but this is a very important ministry of Eagle Mountain. We have a group uh, for young adults. And uh, let me just say at the outset, young adults are very fluid. They have a lot of things going on in their lives. Job changes, uh, getting engaged, uh, 
moving, going away to school, whatnot. So we've had a lot of young adults in and out of the elder living room. But this was last January uh, when we met, Christmas tree there still up. And uh, so next slide, um, this is a, a different group. You, trying to highlight some of the different people that have been a part of our group. And uh, okay, next slide. And then th we were privileged to have Jordan and Tyler uh, come back with us uh, shortly before she gave birth. And uh, one more slide, I think, there. Uh, yeah, so at Christmas time, we had a, a, a little fellowship night. And uh, I have to say, Mary Ann and I, Mary Ann's down in the nursery this morning, but um, we love our young adult group. They are an exciting group of young people and have just been a blessing to us, and we enjoy working with them. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get what we call a quorum together. Uh, if we have three young adults that can join Mary Ann and I, will meet. If we can't get three, then we kick it to the next Wednesday and see what happens. But young adults are a great, great part of, of Eagle Mountain, and we've got some wonderful young adults, and I'll talk more about that later. Next slide. Um, Another thing that's been really close to my heart has been the Unity Men's Breakfast. We have had uh, some great times. We just had one a couple weeks ago, or actually just a weekend ago, over at the Christian Church. I am fully convinced that it is God's will for Christians to dwell together in unity. What do you think? It, it is, you know, we might have some different beliefs. Let, let's get down to brass tacks here. I, I doubt that Mary Ann and I actually agree on every single theological point. Right, but I'm working on her. It's, it's okay. Um, so you know the, the the idea that unity means uniformity. That's not right. We're not talking about uniformity. We're talking about unity. We can believe some different things, but as long as we got the main thing right, right? As long as we've got Jesus front and center, I can have fellowship with you. Call you my brother. Call you my sister. And and that's the most important thing. So unity men's breakfast. Next slide. Um, we got another, yeah, this, this was a little montage that uh, Joel put together, and uh, Rick Broach was one of our speakers uh, in our, our, our breakfast time. Uh, Joe Carter down in the bottom left, the Nazarene pastor has spoken, I've spoken, the Christian church pastor has spoken. Uh, we just have a great time together. Next slide. Uh, in September, I know this is out of order here, I'm trying to be chronological, but in September, uh, we went to the Iron Sharpens Iron Men's Equipping Conference up in Champaign, and uh, we're going to go again in April, and if, brother, if you would like to get your, your batteries charged up, it's an investment of one day, but it is a great day, and I would encourage any of the men to go with us on April 2nd. But this is just a great conference, and we really enjoyed ourselves. Okay, next slide. Next thing on the calendar we had going on was the National Day of Prayer, and the Eagle Mountain uh, worship team uh, carried, carried the ball there to uh, provide the worship for that time. Uh, you know, last year, 20, the National Day of Prayer got COVIDed, had to cancel it. So, you know, you'd think that just because you missed something one year, the next year when you go to do it, everybody be back. But I have discovered that that does not happen at any level in any event. It, it is a slow climb to get back up. We had a lower attendance, but we still had a great day of prayer. And I was really proud of our worship team for serving. So thank you, worship team members, for being there. That is Amy back there on the gym bay. Her head's cut off by the keyboard. But thank you, Amy, for being there. All right, next slide. There we go. So then the next event we had going on was the May 16th parking lot service. Uh, we, you know, we didn't have to be in the parking lot, but it was kind of fun to be in the parking lot again. And so we were out there, and it was a nice day, and God blessed it. Our worship team did a great job. Appreciate Ron Smith and all the work that he went to to uh, set up outside. I know it is a lot of effort, but it's worth it. It's also a way to preach to the neighborhood right? It's like, what are those crazy people doing over there? Well, come over and find out, right? Uh, we'd love to have you be a part of it. We had Pastor Joel preaching from the fire escape, fiery preaching, get it? 
chuckle, 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 right? All right. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. I told Joel, I said, you know, you need the opportunity once to be able to get up there and, and preach from that fire escape. And if Jesus tarries, you know, 10 years from now, you can bring Wren back and say, hey, I preach from up there, and, right? There's something, something cool about preaching from a fire escape. It's just, it's rich. All right, next slide. Uh, there was a crowd that was out there uh, for our parking lot service. Marianne always tells me, now, go slow because it's harder for people out there to see the slide. And so I'm going to slow down just a little bit. Aren't those good-looking people up there? Amen. Okay, next slide. Uh, we, our first fellowship meal since COVID. I think every single person that was in attendance on Sunday, June 27th, went downstairs and ate. And usually I can say with confidence, we will always have enough food. That day, we did not have enough food. We had two smoked pork butts, and, and I don't know what else we had on the menu, but I mean, it, it should have met the need. But man, we had fun that day, and the poor kitchen staff didn't even get a chance to eat. I had to take them to Joe's and, uh, and uh, buy them lunch because there was nothing left out there on the table. But you can see from, from end to end there, that place was full because I think we missed being together so much. You know, this was the first time in well over a year that we were able to do that, and we had a great time. And there, there's another shot of it there. It was, it was just a very, very good day. All right. Next slide. And the ladies got together again in 21. They're at Yoder's. How many of you know Yoder's is a good place to be? Come on now. Even Lydia raised her hand, and she works there. Yeah. You know, if I'm at Yoder's, I'm probably happy. I'm just going to put that out there. And the ladies got together for one of their fellowships. Uh, Karen uh, Literal uh, organized the, uh, the ladies' lunches, and that was a big hit in 21. Okay. You know, one of the things going on just... Friendships made. Um, Marianne and I were taking uh, Pam and Clark to uh, Me Vera Cruz here in town, and we walked in. This is after a Sunday morning, and lo and behold, there were those four people sitting there at that booth. And they're just such good looking folks. Marianne just had to take a picture of them. And, uh, you know, it, this is good stuff. To have lunch with people after Sunday, you know, there's, that's a good thing. I would encourage you, if you've not ever done that, think about it because relationships can be made friendships made next slide uh, in 21 we sustained friendships you know it, we found out I think in the midst of all this how much we need our friends being isolated and shut up at home it's not good for us and so uh, being together friendships made friendships sustained next slide Father's Day Sunday, this was a special time. Pastor Joel had all the men come up and, and uh, he prayed for us and just was a, a good time to be together in the house of the Lord. Next slide. This was a special thing here. This was in September. Uh, Terry Shields turned 90 in September. And so we had kind of a small group reunion uh, there was a small group that Wanda Shields led at Gail's house for years. And so since Terry, we, we had celebrated Terry turning 80, and now that he turned 90, it's like, okay, we got to do this again. So I love this next picture. Is that not a good picture of Terry and Wanda Shields? You know, they're not able to, to get out very much anymore, uh, particularly here in the wintertime. I'm hopeful when the warm weather uh, gets better, we'll see more of them. Wanda said, I miss being in church. I have got to come to church. But, but Terry has not been in a real strong place. But they, you cannot look at a place in this building and not find Terry Shields' fingerprints. I tell you what, the, the man invested his life in this old building when we first got it and the years after that. And so Terry and Wanda, very very vital part of our congregation and we love Terry and Wanda and I hope they get to get to see this uh, this video afterwards all right next slide there you go what was going on there we had water baptism 
And we thought we were going to baptize four, and we ended up baptizing five. I was number five. So I tell Daryl, I say, Daryl, we are brothers in baptism. Um, long story short, uh, I went down with him. But we both came back up, and we're smiling there, right? Aren't we, Daryl? It's all good. He got baptized, I got baptized, and it was, a, it was a fun moment. So that was October 3rd. Now, next picture, uh, there's, there's everybody, all five of us that got baptized that day. So it, it, was, a, it was a fun morning, and uh, so appreciate uh, the privilege, literally the privilege of being able to, to baptize people. Now, Pastor Joel made a video uh, that... Uh, was his adaptation of what happened when Daryl and I were under the water. And it's, if you've not seen the video, Joel might, do you still have that video? Somewhere, okay, it's good. It, it's a, uh, but fun day, fun day. Okay, next slide. Jay Covert and our missions emphasis in November. Uh, love Jay Covert, he's one of our missionaries. Uh, you know, the next day after he was with us, he shaved off that big old beard. Yeah, shave that thing off and cut the sides of his hair back. He looked like a whole different guy. You know, I'm thinking it was my influence. <laughs> I'm just thinking. He said, you know, that Darren Elder is a squared away guy. I think I'm going to be more like Darren. That's, that's, that's my story. But um, anyway, uh, we love Jay Covert. Great, great guy. Uh, one of the things that we really enjoyed in, uh, in 2021, every Sunday, is the privilege of having a great worship team. Amen? Can we just say thank you? Yes. Amen. And I know some of our members are downstairs and can't hear that, but I, I want them to know how much we appreciate them. I know it's a lot of work and time and commitment and pressure. It's a whole lot easier just to sit out in the pews and be, be a, a worshiper out there, but... They put themselves out every Sunday. Tara's done a great job to lead our team, and, and it has just been a, a sweet part of our Eagle Mountain life. And I've, I've loved adding that middle voice up there. You, isn't that? She's all right, isn't she? Yeah, amen. God, God bless the, the violin. We have really enjoyed having that violin as a part of our worship sound. That's new for 21 in fact, new in the last part of 21. So, uh, yeah, we, we've just had great worship times. We're very blessed. And uh, I'm, I'm so thankful for each member of our team and for Tara's leadership. All right, next slide. Christmas program. To me, this was one of the, the sweetest gatherings of our Eagle Mountain family was for our Christmas program. There was just something really special about that. Next slide. Um, Various people sharing Elena and Tara together. Next slide. Had Isaiah up there singing. Some guy preaching, trying to. Next slide. Beautiful violin music in our, in our program that night. And then uh, we had uh, Josh and, and Patrick and Amanda uh, adding a beautiful song. Next slide. And then at the end, a kind of a... a conclusion of people that had been in the program some of them we we cut out accidentally I mean they're too it was too broad to get everybody in there but uh, look at that picture is that not sweet that Christmas program to me just really really touched my heart um, Tara did a great job organizing that and bringing that together so uh, one of my my happy memories of 2021 all right next slide now this was a picture that uh, was taken at a minister's fellowship in December. Every year, our sectional group of ministers uh, has a, a Christmas fellowship, and uh, Joel and Jeannie went with us. And next slide. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just pause it right there to say that uh, um, at the end of 2021, Pastor Joel resigned from his ministry here, but I just wanna say how much I have appreciated working with this brother. He has been a good friend, a good confidant. Uh, he has stood in the gap and filled many gaps. I remember when I gave him an assignment. You know, Joel never complains about that. He, he, he just did it. 
But there was one time I gave him an assignment. Joel, I don't know if you remember this assignment or not. But when you got done with that, you came up to me and you said, you owe me. (laughs) Yeah, we won't talk about the, do you remember the assignment now? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but uh, just a a faithful servant, uh, our our youth pastor. But he was more than that, uh, really more uh, as an associate. He filled in preaching for me. And uh, Jeannie taught Sunday school for a long time. And uh, so we, we are missing Joel and Jeannie as far as their, their presence on staff, but it has been good to have uh, Joel back with us on Sundays, which is something we all kind of hope he, he continues to do. What do you all think? Amen. Amen. So pausing on this slide, I just want to say that uh, there's, there's so much more that could uh, be put out there as far as people that have been so significant uh, to, to the Eagle Mountain journey. But uh, I want to say a big thank you to our elders, to John McCollum, to Ed Belaski, to Alan Miller. Alan's downstairs teaching uh, Sunday school. But I've got a great group of elders that have worked with me. Uh, the last two years have been tough. This whole COVID thing and making decisions and how do we handle this? How do we meet the needs of our people in the midst of challenging circumstances? And uh, these three elders have just been a tremendous, tremendous blessing. And I am so glad that God has raised them up. Ed Belaski did not know what he was getting into uh, when he signed on to be an elder and then came along COVID and it just was... Uh, a challenging time. But these are great men. You should be very proud of them and their spouses for all they do to make Eagle Mountain a better place. Can we just take a moment to say thank you to our elders and their wives? Amen. Amen. Now, I joke about her, but I love Gail Hines. She is, she is my office buddy, and I appreciate her. She's our uh, administrator. She also uh, takes care of this building. I'll tell you what, she, she loves this building and she keeps this place clean. And uh, but Gail, we appreciate you and all you do for Eagle Mountain. I know you, you're going to talk to me about this later, but can we show our appreciation for Gail? Because we, we do appreciate her. I know, I know, she does not like recognition, but give honor to whom honor is due. So Uh, And then we've we've got our our Sunday school teachers, we've got our security people, we've got our media people back there that are so faithful every Sunday, Uh, you know, security people, uh, just people working down right now in the kitchen. Um, We're blessed with good people. And so as we close out kind of our reflections on 21, I just want to say how grateful I am to all of you. Uh, 21, we saw some new people added to Eagle Mountain, and uh, that's been great. It's been exciting to see new faces uh, in the midst of COVID when a lot of churches are declining. Uh, it has seemed that Eagle Mountain has, has been on an increase. I mean, look at this turnout this morning. This is good. And we just appreciate the people that God has sent our way. We are very blessed. Okay, so now we're going to shift gears, and I just... Well, I guess this is still part of 21. What worked for us in 21? Well, first of all, I think we did a good job of reconnecting. Uh, There was a lot of just people coming back together again, appreciating one another. We restarted Sunday school in 21. Uh, Small groups fired back up again and just various things. And so I loved seeing our people enjoy being together. So that's been great. The the finances have, have just, as you see, general fund, that's a, that's a record year. Um, you should have received, when you came in, um, a kind of a salmon-colored sheet like this. Did everybody get one of these sheets when you came in? Everybody that would like one. This is, we give these out every year. It's just our annual financial report. Uh, if anyone didn't get one, it looks like Ed's going to go get some. So if you would like one, didn't get one, raise your hand, and Ed will, Ed will give you one. But... Uh, you see, we brought in in general fund $169,000. In, uh, in 20, we brought in 149000 So we saw a $20,000 general fund increase in the midst of COVID. I think that's good. Uh, part of that is because the new people that God has sent us, 
uh, this year and in 20 uh, have been faithful giving people and it just makes a difference if everybody pitches in it just makes a huge difference we've seen it in our missions fund uh, with thirty thousand dollars that's 15 percent more money than what we gave in 20 i think that's amazing uh, and that is just because um, newer people have come in to our congregation who believe in missions and they've given to missions and we've seen people increase their missions pledges and I've just been so excited about uh, our missions work and we took pledges when Jay Covert was here and uh, we had a record amount we've got uh, pledged $2,160 a month to go to missions and that came from 27 different pledges. Some of those were new pledges, first-time pledges, and I'm always encouraged to see that. And so uh, missions has been going strong. In fact, I did a little number crunching, and out of every dollar, okay, think about this. Out of every dollar that came into Eagle Mountain, 16.5% of that, 16 and a half cents, left here to go to the work of missions. And I think that that is really a good thing. Your, your missions dollars do not come here to sit here. They come here for us to send them out. And so I just want to say a big thank you uh, for believing in missions and, uh, and supporting that. So missions pledges, yeah, record year. Why these financials bless me? They bless me because what Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, that is so important that Jesus uh, has our hearts. And, you know, I wish we had a little barometer where we could kind of measure, you know, how much of a heart does Jesus really have? We don't have such a thing. But Jesus said where your treasure is, that's where you'll find your heart. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? How, uh, you know, if, if, if you're into hunting, you could probably find hunting in your checkbook right? Yes. If you are into uh, music, you'll probably find music in your checkbook because we spend money where our heart is, right? That's just the way we are. So having evidence that our heart is with Jesus, it shows up in what you give here at Eagle Mountain, what you give to other ministries that are out there. Uh, you know, these are things that indicate that our heart is with Jesus and with the kingdom. And so I just want to say a big thank you for the hearts of Eagle Mountain. I'm encouraged that your heart is fully into serving Jesus and honoring him with your tithe as well as with your offering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's go to the next slide. Vision reflection here. You know, we had a vision, I thought it was kind of catchy, you know, in 2020, 2020 vision, right? Right, 2020 vision, okay. Well, so what would be the perfect vision well, the perfect vision would be to do what Jesus told us to do in Matthew 28, 19, and 20 when he said to be disciples who make more disciples. That's right. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Right? That's the great commission. And so uh, to just kind of get Eagle Mountain back on this path of re being reminded of what we are called to do by our Lord. And so we did that, and we got that all set up in January of 20, and we were excited, and then we got COVIDed. Shut church down for the first time ever, and I, I personally kind of regret that we ever did that. But nonetheless, trying to do what seemed right at the time, we did that for about two and a half months, I think. So here we are. We've got a vision, uh, and, and then we're having eight people run a video service, and it was just really strange. So we got COVIDed in 20, and, uh, we, but we, we renewed the vision for 21, 2.0, kind of like take two, right? Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Well, we kind of got COVIDed again in, in 21. Um, so, you know, this, this whole concept, this vision, be a disciple who makes a disciple, it, it, it implies that, that a disciple is both a noun and a verb. You remember talking about that? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that part of the vision grew for you 
in 20 and 21. You know, you can learn to be a better disciple of Jesus in your living room, right? You can pick up a new devotional habit. You can do some soul searching and remove some stuff from your life and add some stuff in your life. And I'm hoping that in 20 and 21 that you picked up some new spiritual disciplines and habits that have helped you be a better disciple of Jesus. But there's still the other half of this, to be disciples who are actively making disciples. And I know there was discipleship that went on But specifically, we're looking at how desperately people in our world need Jesus Christ. You know, the most important, significant situation is what have you done with Jesus? If you get that wrong, you can have all the toys in the world and you can have wonderful health and you can have a great family and a powerful education and all of that, but you have missed the bottom line of life. And so it is up to us, the followers of Jesus, to be disciples who make more disciples. Let me tell you what Jesus has done for me. Let me tell you about how Jesus has changed my life, right? To be fishers of men. That is the most important mission that we can ever adopt. So, next slide. What do we do now? Well, I don't think that we can accept no new disciples as normal. Now, in 21, we had four people make commitments to Christ, and that's good. Remember the the sermon about one, how one person coming to Jesus, there's a party in heaven, right? One person matters. We're never disparaging the fact that we only had four people came to Jesus. We had four people come to Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, that's great, but wouldn't it be even cooler if it was 14, right? You know, it's like, well, I don't know, everybody in Douglas, no, everybody in Douglas County is not saved, okay? Now, no names, but we all know people that would be much better people if they knew Jesus, right? We want everybody in our county, in our circle of influence, to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And there's lost people at Master Brand. There's lost people at CHI. There's lost people in my neighborhood. There's lost people at Yoder's. There's lost people all over the place. It's not for a lack, right? It's not like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know any. Well, sometimes it is that we don't know. Um, So where's the disconnect? The disconnect, I think, comes maybe sometimes in motivation. Let's unpack that for a little bit. I got a a couple minutes. Yes, I do, Tony. Do not shortchange. I think Tony sets his watch fast. Then he can look at it and tell me, hey, you're done. No. I think in some ways we kind of fall prey to the mindset of our culture that says, in the end, when it's all said and done, who goes to heaven? Well, what do people in our culture say? Who goes to heaven? Come on, you know the answer. Good people. Come on. Good good people go to heaven. If you're a good person, when you die, you go to heaven. Can I tell you, that is not what the Bible teaches. Okay? It is not what the Bible teaches because, to be honest, nobody's what? Nobody's good except one, Jesus. And so, but we think, but, but they are such a good person. They're kind, they're generous, they'd give me the shirt off my back. They, they would be there for me, they would see me in the hospital. They're good people. I don't doubt that they're good people, but if you know they don't know Jesus, then you know that they're not going to go to heaven when they die. And that is pretty blunt but it's true. And we need that motivation, I believe, that says, you know what, there's there's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. What? No man comes to the Father except through me. So if there's another way besides Jesus, Jesus is what? He's a liar, a deceiver, right? There's only one way to heaven. Your Buddhist friend or your uh, atheist friend, you know what? He has not found another way because there is no way 
but having a relationship with Jesus to be forgiven of your sins and given the gift of eternal life. So we can't let this, uh, this good mentality infect us. Every person we know needs to know Jesus. And I'm as guilty as that, of that as anybody. It's like, well, it's inconvenient. It's not a good time. I, what if they reject me? What if they quit being my friend? What if they, whatever. But bottom line, every person needs Jesus. So maybe the issue is education. Maybe, maybe we need to learn more about how to reach people for Jesus. Anita, maybe we need some more of, oh goodness, his name, it was in there. Ray Comfort, yes, if you've ever watched a Ray Comfort video, you like, man, I wish I could be like that guy. He could talk to anybody about Jesus. And if you're saying, Ray Comfort, who's that? Google him, watch one of his videos. But, uh, you know, it's like, we, we need some training, I think, some help. To, to how, do you, how do you get a spiritual conversation going? So actually, in the end, I think the problem, the disconnect, is really both. Sometimes we have motivational issues. Sometimes we just don't know what to do. Okay, next slide. So the elders and I, we thought, okay, we cannot abandon this vision of being disciples who make disciples. So we have looked at this year being the year that we are going to step up equipping disciples to make more disciples. Okay, you notice there's a new word there, right? Equipping, what does that mean? That means helping people to know how to share their faith, to know what to say, to, to have more confidence. And so that is gonna be our focus for 2022. So there it is, there's the vision statement, 2022. Equipping disciples to make more disciples. Okay, so you say, Pastor, what does that look like? Next slide. It'll look like evangelist Rick McGue uh, coming up here on Sunday, on March 6th. He's going to be here in the morning and the evening. If you remember Mick, Rick McGue, he's the faith and reason guy. How many of you remember Rick? Faith and reason. You know, knowing what you believe, why you believe it, being able to stand up for your faith and be able to have spiritual conversations with confidence. And so Rick is going to be here in two weeks, and he is going to specifically help us to, to learn more about sharing our faith and having confidence in what we believe. And then Sunday night, he's going to be back with us, and we're going to do kind of a question and answer thing. So if you have a question that you would like Rick to answer that night, I would appreciate you emailing me that question, and I will get these to him early so he can be ready and, and have good answers for us. So I really hope that you will come out and join us. So that's just an example. Next slide. Uh, I, we're going to see more speakers and missionaries addressing this topic. Uh, Mark Bettinger, I'm trying to get a date worked out with Mark. He's one of our, our missionaries to the Eastern Illinois campus. Mark's life is sharing his faith with campus students. And I want to get Mark in here to help motivate us and equip us. Uh, Ryan Brooks, who we just uh, saw back in January, Ryan does the same thing up at the U of I campus. I want to get Ryan back here to help us. To Okay, how do you do it? How do you step up? How do you introduce Jesus in a, in a break room conversation? You know, how do you do these things? So um, an emphasis on making disciples in our Bible study. Sermons on discipleship and evangelism. We just need more equipping. I, I see some Ray Comfort in our future too, watching some good Ray Comfort videos and getting some teaching. Uh, I always, whenever I watch his stuff, I come away, I can do that. You know, it's like, I could do that. I, he, he emboldens me. So some good stuff is coming. The first thing is going to be Rick McGue. All right, next slide. Now, how long are we going to work on this vision? Well, until we really get it, right? Until we really get it and it starts to happen. Uh, until it becomes a core value in our hearts. Until Jesus comes. Keep passing the baton. Remember, we've, we've talked about this baton before. It is not success at the end of your life when you lay there in a the casket with the baton on your chest, said, I got the baton, I got the baton, I got the baton. Whoo, I'm going to heaven. I mean, that's success, but it's not. How many people did you pass the baton to? How many people did you take with you 
over the course of your life? How many people are going to be in heaven because they knew you? Kind of quiet in here. I mean, this is, this is what it's all about, is learning to pass this baton until Jesus comes. You know, it, it's getting more challenging in America to stand up for Bible truth. It really is. It's scary, the rights that are being taken away up in Canada, and we're seeing these things, and it's like, you know, what starts in Europe, what starts in Canada, eventually trickles into America. We have got to be spiritually strong people, and the time is ripe for us to pass the baton to people in our lives. So, until Jesus comes, this is good and pleasing in the sight of God, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Amen? Do you believe that? There's a place in heaven for every person that Jesus created. There's no exceptions to that. Not a believer in predestination in the sense of some are created for heaven, some are created for hell. It's not in the Bible. It's God's will that none should perish, that all should come to repentance. Right? We have an opportunity. This is our watch. We've only got so much time, and we need to maximize it for Jesus. Okay, next slide. Can you imagine the dream? Think about people that are in your life. Think about them being saved. Wouldn't that be cool? That brother-in-law that gives you such a pain every time you get together. Wouldn't that be great to see him saved? Wouldn't it be great to see coworkers saved? Uh, more important, I think, is just the joy of knowing that we're investing in what is most important. There is a great joy in living a life of purpose and investing our lives in other people, helping them to know Jesus better, helping them to walk more closely, leading people that are lost to a new faith in Christ. All right, next slide. Now, these are two concluding challenges. The chicken got picked up two minutes ago, so we're good. It's still on the road, so don't worry. Two concluding challenges. Things that I feel like are important for our congregation to really think about in 22. There's probably more things, but I tried to limit it to two. We need to walk more closely with the Holy Spirit. You know, we've been talking about healing here in recent weeks. And, and that is so much of what the Holy Spirit wants to do in his church. To heal us in body, to heal us in soul, to heal us in spirit, which happens when we get saved. So um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It was, it was wonderful this morning to get a fresh word from the Lord today, wasn't it? I mean, to get a fresh word from the Lord today. God, we serve a living God. It shouldn't be crazy that he speaks to us. Okay, let me try that again now. We serve a living God. It should not be crazy that we expect him to speak to us, right? The spirit and the gifts are ours, Martin Luther said. You know, it's, this is the age of the spirit. Jesus handed us off to the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to go, but I'm going to send you a counselor, a comforter, and he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit wants to move in a greater way. He wants us to listen to him. He wants to empower us to witness and live holy lives. The Pentecostal baptism in the Holy Spirit is still real. And we need to drink deeply from the Holy Spirit's well. Because he is the critical force and power behind us being a witness. We can't do it without him. Jesus said, no man comes to the Father except what? The Spirit draws him. Right? The Spirit draws him. We need the empowering of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. Acts 1.8. Our vision demands his empowering. Okay, so that's number one. Number two. We need to focus on ministry to those most at risk. Who are those that are most at risk? I think if you just want to put it in a big, big bracket, it's anybody under 40. Anybody under 40, the oldest, you know, you know how they've got these generational tags, right? They've got, you know, uh, I'm a baby boomer. I was born between 44 and 64, so I'm a, I'm a boomer, right? Um, 
Then my brothers, uh, they both came along, and they are Gen Xers. Okay, then after Gen X, then we had Gen Y. But uh, the, the Gen Y is really what they've been given a new name, and that is to be called the Millennials. Anybody born from 81 to 96 is, is considered a Millennial. Did you know the oldest Millennial then turns 40, turned 40 last year? Or turns 40, I guess, this year. Anyway, they're 40. Uh, so think about that. And how many people, now no hands, but how many people are here in Eagle Mountain that are under 40 compared to people that are over 40? Now, I just want to say thank God for every person that is here, period, because everybody matters. Come on now, right? You are important, aren't you? Yes, you matter, you're important, you're significant. But in the house of God, it is becoming a rarer and rarer thing to see people under the age of 40, and particularly people between 18 and 30. They have been the biggest casualty of COVID. And with them, what do they take? They take our kids. If you don't have the young adults between 20 and 40, you don't have kids and you don't have youth because their moms and their dads aren't coming to church. Now, let me put this in a little bit of perspective. In 2019, pre-COVID, on Easter Sunday, right here at Eagle Mountain, some of you were, many of you were here. Okay, beautiful day. We had a big promotion going on. We had a candy hunt going on after service. We did a, a giveaway, had a drawing. Did you know that on that Sunday, Easter Sunday of 19, we had 175 people here at Eagle Mountain? I was like, wow, that is the highest attendance that we've ever had for a regular worship service since I've been here. But hear this. Jeannie Rupert was registering kids at the door 12 and under to be a part of the drawing for the bike that we gave away, or a gift card. I don't know, what was it, Tara? It was a bike or a gift card? Gift card. 22 kids, 12 and under, were registered that Easter Sunday morning. And they were your grandkids, and they were people that you invited. 22 kids, 12 and under, were here in Eagle Mountain three years ago on Easter Sunday. And now today, how many kids show up here on Sunday mornings that are 12 and under? I know Easter's a special Sunday. I know if you gave a, had a drawing for a gift card every day, we'd see Tony every Sunday, and he'd be signing up and, you know. <laughs> come in one door, go out the other, come back, you know. And, but to me, that just says the potential. There's kids out there and they're the generation at risk. They're the ones that are making life decisions. You know, most people who come to Jesus come to him before they are 18 years of age. And if we're not having a voice into the lives of kids that are 18 and under, we are missing an opportunity that we might never get again. We have got to step up our caring and our concern for young adults, and thank God, I told you about our young adult small group. We've got, got some, but there, you know, that group has to always be replenished. We've, we've, but we've got to think about our children and our youth. Okay, next slide. Action points. What do we do? We have got to staff our church for growth. Uh, since Pastor Joel's resigned, we've had an opening uh, in, our, in our youth ministry, and uh, we have been looking at that and talking about that. Hasn't been much time since that, so we've only met once. Uh, but something we have done even back in September, back in the summertime, we talked about hiring somebody to lead our children's ministries because it, it, it's a weak spot for us. And so in September, we put a kind of a help wanted ad out on our district website for a part-time uh, children's ministry leader. And I'm sorry to say that that netted us zero response. 
and nobody step up to that. It's a big ask, right, to ask somebody who's uh, going to have to move here to take a part-time job. I get that. So we are now looking at, at everything, children and youth, and trying to make some determinations. I would ask that you pray for the board and I. We are going to be meeting today uh, after the meal, uh, talking about this very thing. Uh, we, we need the staff for growth. We need leadership for children's ministries and for youth ministries. It is a very important thing, and let me just say how much I appreciate Tara for stepping up and leading our youth Sunday school. I know that makes for a very busy Sunday morning for her. I've appreciated my, my elders, uh, Alan and John. They're busy guys on Sundays, but they have agreed to work together to make sure our elementary class is staffed. Uh, Gail Hines has stepped up and said, you know what, any time that there is ministry need for the nursery, she said, I will do it. And I appreciate those attitudes. But we need the whole Eagle Mountain family pulling together to say, you know what, young people are important. We can't just wish and hope that more young people would show up. We need to be intentional. We need to be intentional about providing the kind of services that they need if they come with families. Have you ever arm wrestled a three-year-old through a worship service? <laughs> there, Beth, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, boy, don't you feel spiritual when you come out of that? I mean, you're like, oh, my goodness, this is, this is tough. We, we need people in our preschool, in our nursery. We need people to help us, uh, and we need them investing in, in the children. And so... I, I put this out there as a, as a very serious concern for what I think Eagle Mountain needs to look at in, in 2022. And I'm hoping that we can take some concrete steps to, uh, to, to add some new paid leadership. And I'm also looking at us stepping up as a congregation. The, the last part of this, notice, care, and reach out, and even serve. It all goes together. I just want to ask you, Okay, this is a pastoral favor. If you're here on a Sunday morning and there's a younger person here that you don't know, I'll triple dog, I might even quadruple dog dare you to go up to that young person and introduce yourself to them and tell them how glad you are that they came to church. Because if you get a young person that comes to church and they don't, really know anybody, they, they're just here, you know what, that, that's almost a miraculous thing. We need to rise up and say, whoa, there's a new young person here today. Now, not being like vultures, you know, you don't, don't want to mob tackle them, but we need, we need to notice them and let them know that it's important for them uh, to, to be here and there's room for them, right? I mean, you know, I, I just think staying a little longer after church is a good thing, connecting with people, particularly younger people. Encourage our younger people. We've got great younger people that are here regularly. We need to just let them know, hey, we appreciate you. you right behind Tony, not Tony. You four, we appreciate you guys. We know you wrestle kids to get here to church. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here. It's important. That, you know, there's not many people here like that row. But I think... Yeah, they're thinking, oh, wait a minute, how do I take that? <laughs> take it with the very best sense. I just believe that God's got more young people for Eagle Mountain, but we have to be intentional about it, okay? We just have to be intentional about it. We need more help in Sunday school, you know, hiring people to help us out with children and youth. That's only part of the equation. We need people that will teach Sunday school, that will help with youth outings. It's, it's a congregational thing. So I'm, I'm just imploring you, help us out. Make young people a priority because they are the at-risk generation. Okay, next slide, and we're getting close. A prayer. As our worship team is heading up here, and it's just now, it's, it, this is good, Tony, isn't it? Just now, 1130. Praise God, I'm smelling the chicken. We're going to wind this down. But let's pray. And you, I'll just read this and you can agree with me. Holy Spirit, because he's the source, give us your vision for the person in our life that you want us to reach out to in love and point them to Jesus. 
Fill us with your passion and power to boldly overcome every obstacle and step up to pass on the baton of faith in Jesus. Next slide. Holy Spirit, give us your heart for the younger generations. Forgive us our judgments and grant us tender hearts to love those most at risk. Guide us as we focus on ministries and relationships that will make these younger generations feel loved and welcome in our faith family. Amen. How many think the Holy Spirit wants to help us with those things? Amen. I think this vision for 2022 is, is, is going to go places. I'm excited about it. I believe uh, a year from now we're going to see more ministries in place for kids and we're going to see more younger people in church. Uh, but it's going to be because all of us work together, because we all work together. And I hope you'll take this very seriously. The church is losing young people, but I want Eagle Mountain to be the exception. I want to see them drawn here to the love of Jesus that they feel. All right, last slide. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Can you say amen? amen. 22 is going to be awesome. Come on in, worship team. Hallelujah. I, I praise God for all of his goodness and all of his faithfulness. He has blessed us abundantly. And so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you have done to uh, make Eagle Mountain a great place. So as our worship team continues to come out, <clears throat> as our worship team can yes Mary Lou help me out Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come on out. We are ready. Praise God. Let's all stand together. Tara's going to lead us in a closing song. Pray for our meal and bless our time together downstairs. <laughs> I first want to take a second. I didn't do this earlier. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but over the last year or so, our team has grown a little bit up here, and I'm just very thankful for that. We've added, let's see, in the last year and a half, how long have you guys been here? A year and a half, two years, right after COVID, kind of. So we've had, added them, and then we've added Michelle, and we still have our faithful ones back here, you know. But we love them all, and I'm very grateful for this group, and uh, that they are obedient to hear from the Lord. Amen. Now, this one's an old one, and we've done a lot. So hopefully, if you don't know it, you will pick up on it because we want you to have a little fun. And no, I'm not going to do in, right out, right up, right down, right this time. But, uh, but have fun. Give the Lord a shout of praise during this because this one should get you moving. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
that have ser- are serving and, pr- and who have prepared it. Let it be nourishment to our body. Lord, I pray that as we go our separate ways today, that we will know that we've been in the presence of the Most High God. And those that we come into contact with today will know that there's something different about us. And they will want what we have. And what we have is Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.